Erin. Welcome to my everyday. So today I thought that I would do a little story time with you guys. I don't know if you're interested in story times at all. This is just a story of something that happened to me recently and I just thought that it was interesting enough to share with you guys. There's also a little lesson to be learned so I thought that it would be important and so Basically, I was at the park with my kids. We were having a play date with some friends. So we met up with some friends at the park and I needed to go to the washroom. So I asked my friend if she could watch my children and she did. So I went into the washroom and then I went to go and wash my hands. And when I walked up to the hand dryer, I saw a white cell phone sitting face down on the white hand dryer and I thought oh poor soul whoever it is that used the washroom before me must have put their phone on the hand dryer and then walked away and not even realized because it kind of blended together so of course I'm sitting there thinking well what do I do do I grab it do I leave it there is the person coming back for it but the first thing that I thought of is if I leave it here there's a really good chance that somebody is going to steal it and this person is never going to see this phone ever again so I grabbed the phone and I started walking around the park and trying to see if I could find the person that it belonged to. So for all of you who are cell phone users, it's one of my worst nightmares is losing my phone. You know how many things you have on your phone, especially when it comes to like photos. I know that I have some very important, important photos of my children and events and videos, and I would hate it if I lost my phone. So I would hope that if I lost my phone, somebody would try to find me. So. I asked my friend to continue looking after my children for a little bit while I walked around the park just to try and see if somebody had lost their phone. I ran into moms and younger girls and a whole bunch of people because I figured that whoever left their phone was probably a female since it was in the ladies washroom. And so I walked around and walked around and I searched for about an hour and never found anybody. So then I sat down and tried to see like could I get into the phone, could I look to, through some contacts. And I learned very quickly that the phone had been put on airplane mode. So then I got a little bit concerned and I worried because I thought, oh no, like what if this person was a tourist and they're not in town for very long? What do I do? Do I continue to hold on to this phone? Do I take it back into the washroom? Do I set it down on a hair dryer and walk away and just hope that they are returned, that the phone is returned to its rightful person? And it just weighed on me and I thought, no, I just can't do that because I will never know if the person gets the phone back. So I took the phone and went to social media. I went on Facebook. I went into a whole bunch of buy and sell groups. There are groups that I belong to that have over 30,000 people and basically just wanted to get the word out. There's a lost and found group in our city as well. And I was pretty sure this person was a tourist, um, but I hoped that maybe they had family or somebody that knew that they had lost the phone that could find them. Now I know what you guys are wondering, why didn't I just pick up the phone and call one of the contacts? One of the things that I haven't mentioned is that the phone was password protected. So I couldn't get into it, um, but I was somehow, by some miracle, I have no idea, able to switch it from airplane mode to service. And so I hoped that the person would call but then I worried that they wouldn't because they were worried that I wouldn't be able to figure out how to switch it from airplane mode. So I went as far as to, once I went on social media and plastered it all over Facebook, of course I got a ton of messages from people saying, here's how to break into it, here's what you do, call Apple, call the service provider, pull the SIM card out, all these different suggestions that were coming my way. And I had no interest in breaking into the phone, I had no interest in um, resetting the phone because I was worried that this person might lose their information or their photos and it really was none of my business. I didn't really want to get into the phone, I just wanted to find the person. So. Because I was able to switch it from airplane mode, um, I was able to kind of get the idea that they were with AT&T because that came up. No, I got a text message from AT&T as soon as I switched it from airplane mode to um, service, letting me know that I could, if I was the customer of course, that I could, um, buy a plan um, to save myself roaming charges while I was traveling. So that was a little more of an indication to me that this person was definitely a tourist. 
um, and that they were on vacation and I felt terrible I just really wanted to get the phone back to them so I did call Apple and they couldn't help me they said that I should turn it into the police station I called the police station in the hopes that somebody had reported they had lost us a phone and they couldn't give me any information either. So it's great that we live in a world with privacy, but in this case, it actually hindered getting the phone back to this person at that time, um, as well as the fact that this person had blocked the phone by having a passcode on it. And I know you guys are all asking, well, why didn't I just activate Surrey and ask, you know, where's my phone or whatever. And Surrey had been shut off and there was no data. So I was unable to get into that. And I did try to get into the emergency contact section in the phone and it was blank. So I really had nothing to work on other than a picture on the main screen, which I believe was of a basketball team or something. So that didn't help me either. So I went back to social media back to Facebook letting them know what my next steps were which was handed into the police station within the next 24 hours if I couldn't figure out who this person was or how to get it back to them so I all I did track down AT&T to try and see if I gave them the IMEI number from the iPhone if they could help me figure out you know who it belonged to they told me they could never tell me who it belonged to but they could take down my information and try and contact the person and get them to contact me back but unfortunately that didn't help either. They were unable to um, figure out who it belonged to because they said they needed to narrow it down to a certain region. So I hung up and I was really upset and I kept, I turned it on periodically, but I wanted to save the battery, um, hoping that the person would call or someone would call. Um, I went to bed that night, I got up the next morning and then it said no service. And so I was convinced that the person had actually uh, reported the phone lost or stolen or whatnot so I was kind of heartbroken there so um, somebody suggested that I try and take out the sim card and AT&T had already told me they couldn't help me but I thought you know what I'm gonna try one more time so I pulled the SIM card out and I called AT&T and I gave them the number and they were able to track down the number but again I had the phone and so they took down my information and they said they were going to try and contact the person, see if there was a secondary number on the account, try and see if maybe there was an email address on the account, try and see if they could contact this person. In the meantime, I am unsure, did I make the right decision? Did I, should I have just left the phone? Um, also, another thing that I should probably mention is that that exact same day or within those 24 hours of when I found the phone, someone had been mugged at that park and had their iPhone stolen. So um, I was in contact with those people and the victim of the mugging and it wasn't her phone. So that was another reason that made me think, well, I'm glad I kept the phone because obviously people are stealing phones and this person would never get their phone back. So AT&T, again, back to my second call with them, said that they would try and track down who it was. I made it clear to them that if they did contact the person and the person was in the United States, which at this point I had determined that they were because we do not, we no longer have AT&T here in Canada. So I knew the person must be from the United States. I did let AT&T know that if they were able to track down the person and they contacted me, that I'd be more than willing to mail them the phone if they in fact had already gone back home and we're no longer near where they could come and pick it up. So um, I ended the conversation with AT&T hoping for the best and within about 20 minutes uh, the phone rang and I was like, whoa, what's going on? I was super excited because I was sure that the phone had been disabled. I had confirmed with AT&T that it had not been reported lost or stolen but that the service had just been shut off. So when I answered the phone, it was actually AT&T and the girl felt kind of foolish. She was like, well, of course you're answering the phone. You have the phone. So I guess once she went through the information, she had totally forgotten that that was the number for the phone that was lost and was trying to contact the person to try and get them back the phone. So then I questioned, well, how were you able to call? Is it because you are AT&T and you are the service provider? Like if you're saying that the service has been taken off, how was it that this phone call came through? And she said, I don't know. So again, I hung up and hoped for the best and hoped that maybe they would send an email and that this person would be notified and that they would call me. So the phone at this point, battery is, 
lower. I keep turning it on in the hopes that something will happen, that the person will put service back on so that they can try and find the phone. Maybe AT&T has gotten a hold of them and they will say, you know, reactivate the phone so that I can get it back. Um, I borrowed a charger and charged it and thank God I did that because on the second day, uh, closer to the evening, the phone rang and I jumped out of my seat and I answered it. And this poor guy was so confused. Who's this? Well, who's this? Who's this? Well, who's this? And then I finally said, oh my gosh, I found this phone. Are you looking for your friend? Can you help me find them? I'm trying to return the phone. So whoever this person was, I'm assuming a friend said, yep, let me just message her and let her know you have the phone and to call her phone back. And he hung up and I was freaking out. I was like, oh no, if I can never get a hold of him again, because again, the phone is locked, the number came up until I answered it, and then I'm not able to get back into the phone. I'm able to answer it, but I'm not able to do anything else. I'm not able to search who the last caller was or any of that information. So here I am sitting, pins and needles, waiting for another call, and the phone rings, and it is the girl. She is still in my town. She is so excited that I have found her phone, and she is on her way the next day to get the phone. So she did come by. She came to my address. She picked up the phone. She was super sweet, super nice. She brought me some touristy jam and some maple fudge and it was just so, so nice of her and some butter tarts and she didn't have to do that because like I said before, I was just so happy that I was able to return this phone to her. She was a teenage girl, so she must have been here with her family on holidays, set her phone down and lost it. She knew that she had lost it at the park. She had told me exactly where it was that she had lost it. And so one of the main reasons that I really wanted to do this story time is to let you guys know that as much as we want to protect ourselves from privacy being stolen or whatever and putting passcodes on our phone is very important it is also very important to trust that maybe if you lose your phone someone will try and get it back to you and I had no way of getting this phone back to this girl I really did jump through some big hoops to try and get it back to her and luckily I didn't give up and take it to the police station as quickly as I maybe should have or, or was told to because the phone would have probably have been dead by the time that I took it to the police station and they probably would have turned it off anyway and who knows if they would have answered it and she might not have gotten her phone back. So moral of the story is if you're going to passcode your phone, make your screen some sort of way that if your phone is lost or stolen it can be returned to you. Um, activate your Surrey, but if you're on vacation and it's turned off, then at least put some sort of information in your emergencies um, if you have an iPhone. If you have a different phone, there's always a way. Put some sort of identifying feature, even if it's just a dummy email that you can check if your phone is lost. When I asked her what she tried to do, she said she tried the um, find my phone, but because it didn't have any data service, she wasn't able to figure it out. So it was a happy ending. I'm so glad that I was able to return the phone to her. Um, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this little story time. I hope it wasn't too boring, but these are the kinds of things that happen in my life when I'm out and about, and I'm just really happy that I was able to help out this girl and get this phone back to her. So if you like this video, Video, I'd love a thumbs up. I'd also love any comments you'd like to leave me down below. And if you're not already subscribed and you liked this video and you'd like to see more videos, I'd love to have you. And I hope to see you again soon. Talk to you later. Bye.